Hey everyone, welcome back to the 90th minute. We are some of your hosts. I'm Liam, that's Lucas. Our other two are not here, Waz and Greg. They're you not mean here. Watton? Yeah, Greg's now a part-time presenter, so I mean, special guest Greg. Yeah, he's lucky to have his name mentioned. So basically, this is now the Liam and Lucas podcast, or the Lucas and Liam, however you want to throw the dice. Uh, until next week. Yeah. Hopefully one of them will be on next week. If you are new to the podcast, make sure you hit like, follow, subscribe, Comment down below if you're on YouTube. Get involved in any and all of the conversations. We want to wanna get your opinions. We're going to talk mostly about transfers and rumors this week, as you know, it is the off season, and there's a whole lot of that going around. But of course, there's a World Cup going on, so we will talk and about that Copa later America on in the show. And all the other international tournaments. But I think we're going to start with Barcelona. Because, you know... They're linked with many players come transfer windows. And some pretty big names right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, according to Catalonia Radio or something like that, mm-hmm. who apparently they are a reliable source, they said that uh, Barcelona both want Neymar and Griezmann. Big money. But then when you look at their biggest rivals of Real Madrid, Real Madrid has spent nearly $300 million already this transfer window. So you know what? If I'm Barcelona, I'm I'm throwing some cash around. Would you, if you're a Barca fan, would you accept Neymar back after how he acted in his way to leave them? <laughs> I, I don't like Neymar <laughs> at all. So would I ever want him in my club? No, God no. However, I have to be realistic and I have to be unbiased. I have to understand Neymar is someone that Barcelona need. You know, Messi is aging. They're ha- they've had struggles scoring goals. You know, since. Since that MSN trio, you know, that, that trio was one of Europe's most formidable front threes. And, you know, since Neymar left, they haven't been as deadly on the attack. And, you know, we've talked at length about how the Barcelona attack has transitioned into get the ball to Messi, get the ball to Messi. Well, you know what? Messi's not going to be around forever. He's not. So Neymar's younger. Neymar's more attack-minded. Maybe he's someone that they need. Uh, do you think... The three of Neymar, Griezmann, and Messi could work together? Or do you think some of their talents would have to be sacrificed? I think... I, I don't see why they couldn't. I mean, great players play with... Play, great players play good with great players, you know? Um, you know, Neymar on the left-hand wing, Griezmann probably out wide right? Mm-hmm. Or you play Griezmann through the middle? I don't know, because... You play a false nine, basically. Because Yeah, Griezmann in the past of... <clears throat> Played mostly in the striker role in mm-hmm. with Atletico Madrid, but I guess he can with France. Though he plays with on the right hand wing because Mbappe's up the middle. Well, not necessarily. It a lot I, of the time. He's usually I see France playing four four two. Maybe they change so it. So could in Messi recent be a right winger? Uh, I mean, he is. He did it in the past yeah. when Neymar was there yeah. because Suarez played through the middle, but. Messi always goes towards the middle of the field because <clears throat> Messi has free free roam. Basically, he kind of goes to where the ball is, but. I don't see why that front three would not work. They're all exceptional players. They're all very attack-minded, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. Do you think if Real Madrid wasn't spending so much, Barca? W- do you think Barca would even consider I signing Barca- Neymar? I think Barcelona is getting scared right now. I think they're looking at their future in the next five years, and they're going, we're going to lose some big names. You know, I, saw, I said last, last podcast, Messi and Pique are two big names to me. And then you throw in... You know, you throw in Busquets, Busquets yeah. You know, there, there, there's a, a, a spine of a team that's going to be gone in the next five years. I don't see, I don't, uh, unless they spend big money, I don't see them finding the, the replacements anywhere. And also, do you think Valverde is still the right man to keep as coach? Because he's... The players seem to like him. Well, <laughs> but has he proven to have been a bottle job? I mean... Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. And um, maybe, maybe I assume Barca are keeping Valverde is because there's no options out there. It doesn't cost as much. Yeah, and there's also there was rumors that they wanted Roberto Martinez, but I'd assume he won't be available why, till next why summer. Why the hell would you want Roberto Martinez? Hey, you got Belgium to a semifinal of a World Cup. Congratulations! He also had one of the best squads at the World Cup. Yeah, so did Brazil. Yeah, well, Brazil bottle World Cups. Okay, listen. They they won the most World Cups in history. In the past, in the past, in the past two or three World Cups, they've bottled it. Okay. I mean, seven one. That's all you gotta say. <laughs> seven one. That's all you gotta say, Lucas. Whatever, man. <laughs> so, 
Let's talk about Griezmann. Talk about Neymar a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Griezmann. Where does that leave Atletico? It's going to be interesting. I know there's been heavy rumors of Jao Felix getting bought by Atletico for big good, money. Good signing. I mean, he's proven what he's capable of. But is he ready yet for that top tier competition? Uh, he's, he's a great player. He's been doing well in the Europa League last season, which is yes. the closest to top competition. But you're talking week in, week out, La Liga, Champions League. Well, the good thing for him is that he won't be the main guy. Like, there's obviously other strikers on the team, like Diego Morata. Diego Costa and Morata. Like, well, Diego Costa, he's a bit iffy. He might not be even at the club next Don't season. Hit on Diego. But Morata, he had six goals in like 13 games last season. Morata's a, a decent enough player. He just has, didn't work out at, at Chelsea. Um, but, the question is will he be loaned back to Atletico Madrid? It's a two year loan. Oh, sorry. With an option to buy as well, so... Okay, so that's fair enough, then. And yeah. now with Atletico Madrid losing Griezmann, and then they're also going to lose Rodri, who many, many compare him to Busquets, mm-hmm. but he, he looks like he's going to Manchester City for 70 million euros, which... The replacement to Fernandinho, which we've all been looking for. Yeah, he's, a, he's very tall, too, so... Yeah. That's, for a team like City, who are very short, that's going to be helpful. Manchester City, pieces. yet again, find... Players somewhere that just somehow work out to be godsends. Now, with this Rodri guy, he's only been at the club for one season. Would you? That's pretty frustrating as an Atletico Madrid fan. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I've always said, you know, you know, these big teams seem to snatch up these players after their first good year. And, and Joao Felix is a prime example of that. He's had one good season. Mm-hmm. Who's to say he does that again? What if that's just him having just fantastic form? And he never lives lives up to that again. And you've just sent 150 million into him. Yeah, it, it, it you could say you could take past uh, samples like Ronaldo Sanchez. Who yeah, many expected him to be one of the best midfielders in the world by now, yeah. probably. Even Riyad Mahrez to an extent. I mean, Riyad Mahrez has had good seasons since moving from Leicester, but has he been as good as that one year? I don't think that's a great example because he's had multiple good seasons, but not as good. That season with Leicester, he was unbelievable. I mean, I haven't had a look at his stats recently, but it, I'm sure if he was given more playing time at a, I guess that's the big thing. His play time is not exactly and all, all there. And also, like maybe his play style doesn't suit Manchester City. Maybe he wants the ball more, while players like David Silva, Bernardo Silva, they also want it. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, so. Atletico are going to be a bit of a tricky spot in terms of goal scoring, I feel. I feel. Yeah, uh, Simeone did say in a recent uh, interview that uh, this will be probably his most complex challenge. And you can't really blame him with so many players leaving, including veterans. I mean, veterans. you can't blame him when the two other big boys in your country are spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds. Mm-hmm. Atletico, I don't think they can compete with that financially. Yeah, but with Diego Simeone... I guess next season we'll see just how good of a manager he is because yeah. he's done incredible things with teams that aren't even as good as the team mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if he gets rid of some players on the team and refreshes it a little, maybe he won't be competing next season, but maybe the team will be better in the long term. I'm actually shocked that he's still at Atletico Madrid. I know he loves the club, but after his Champions League final appearances, there were so many teams wanting him. I'm just shocked that he stayed. I mean, many teams will want him if he does end up leaving one day. Yeah. But the only team I could see him going to this summer was Inter, but they got Conte. I think Inter would be a step down for him. He also loves Inter, though. I mean, yes, but I don't know. Yeah. You, I know you don't like Inter at all. I can't stand Inter, but you know. But, Let's talk about PSG. Yeah, because obviously we mentioned Neymar might be going to Barcelona. And his Brazilian teammate, Dani Alves has already left the club. Uh, is that really a big loss for PSG? It depends. I don't know what type of player he was in the dressing room. I assume he was like a party animal. But but he's also, you know, he, on paper at least, he should be a good leader. You know, he's won pretty much every trophy imaginable. I would assume this means Mounier will be staying at PSG because there Probably. were rumors of Arsenal wanting him. But I mean, yeah... I, a new right back might be on the cards for PSG. I don't know who they would look for. I mean, I'm sure they could find someone in France that's half decent, but 
Or Nelson Semedo. Yeah, Nelson Semedo is not a bad shout. But, you know, Danny Alves, very, very good player. You know, did, did it all with Barcelona. Fantastic career. He's yeah. won so much. Where does he go? Does he end it? Does he end his career? Or does he go to an MLS side? Uh, what if he goes I, back to Barcelona? <laughs> Barcelona really need him? What if Pep's like, yo. Come to Man City? I mean, Man City have a good enough de- defense. Apparently I mean, Man City are buying... Wanting to buy Cancelo too and yeah. re signing Kyle Walker to a new contract. I won't even get into that. It's just unfair. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I don't think he's going to retire just yet, but. Go to, go to the MLS. He would do well there. I mean, I feel like spending a lot of money on a wing back in the MLS is sort of pointless, especially well, one that's say, 35. Who would say he would, spend, it would, he would cost a lot of money? Dan- you think Danny Alves uh, wants a cheap contract? Hey, Danny Alves is, can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> Man likes to party. He can, His bank account can sustain his partying for a few years, I feel. He's, he's made enough coin in his day. Man, you don't know what type of party animal he is. That's true. Neither do I, though. He's not Ronaldinho, though. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's move to Germany, I think. Yeah, Mats Hummels is officially going to be joining D- Borussia Dortmund for... Uh, 38 million, which does include bonuses. That's a lot of money for a defender who's rather old. I mean, we did talk about it at length in a couple episodes ago, I believe it was. Yeah, you said you like this move because it brings leadership to the team. I do. I, I, I Do I think Mats Hummels is the defender for Dortmund for the next five years? No, not at all. They have young players there who are good defenders. They're just not experienced enough. Mats Hummels is the guy who's been there been at the club for years and he's you know he's been around the game he knows he knows how to defend so you know he's a guy that can come in teach your younger players a bit of experience a bit of tactics a bit of you know mental awareness and, you know maybe he can help Dortmund be great for another decade or so just by by teaching him and you know i'm sure once he is done his playing career he'll step into a, a, a coaching role at the club because you know he, he did play for Dortmund for how many however many years you know he's a Dortmund not a hero, but he's a big name at the club. Yeah, and obviously some people are a little annoyed because Brit- Dortmund are bringing in players back when yeah. they've turned their backs on them. Yeah, Matt Hummel started at Bayern Munich as a young player, then went to Dortmund, then went to Bayern Munich, and now he's back at Dortmund. So it's like, basically, just get a taxi for the guy a little back and forth every couple of weeks. But, you know, if you want to play in Germany, who else are you going to play for? Yeah, that's fair. You're not going to go to Leipzig because they're brand new, basically. Like, like It's good that Dortmund are becoming more financially capable of a team. Yeah. Because that's what the Bundesliga needs. Teams that can afford more expensive mm-hmm. players so that well, they can compete. I mean, you, you, at least here in Canada, I mean, Bundesliga has blown up on TV especially because, you know, it used to be just Premier League games you could watch on TV. Now you're getting Bundesliga, you're getting some Serie A, you're getting... A little bit of league on here and there. And La Liga as well. La Liga, Scottish Premiership, 5 a.m. You can watch the old firm. You can do it. I do it. I don't. Well, you miss out on some great matches. I also get some sleep. Uh, hey, Unless I... if Liverpool play at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but but any... I do like this move, though. Any other major rumors coming out of Germany? Out of Germany? I mean, Leroy Sané was a deal that we all thought was done and dusted from Man City to Bayern Munich. Now, though, I'm hearing he's going to snub Bayern Munich to stay at Man City and fight for his place. Are you hearing this on your uh, paper? I will, I will find my source here. Hold <laughs> on. Give me, give me a who, few seconds. Who here. called you? This was on Twitter, man. So you didn't hear it then? You just read it? I read it. I read it. Don't, don't hate This was by... It's not, not a good source. Not at all. It's the sun. <laughs> well, I didn't read the source. I just read the thing. <laughs> But to be fair to you, Liam, uh, Uli Hunis did say in a, to some interviewer or something like that that they won't be spending big money for the rest of the summer. They've spent 120-ish million, and mm-hmm. they don't look like they're gonna spend big money anymore. And I guess one thing you gotta question is: Is Gnabry, Coleman, Davies enough for Bayern Munich, or are they gonna bring someone else? If I'm Bayern Munich, I'm signing Leroy Sané. No matter what. Even I mean, how much? How much would he cost in in theory? Okay. He's one of the best young wingers in the world. Yeah. He could develop into 
potentially the best winger in the world. Potentially. He he would be the na- a national icon so in if, Germany. It, it, let's say let's say Liverpool for some reason were able to sign him. How much would you want to spend for him? How much would, would you be willing to part with to sign Leroy Sané? Uh, at uh, this very moment? Yeah. I wouldn't want to give City more money. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> if, if, if just you're paying for him, how much are you willing to spend? Uh, probably 80? I was saying 80, 85 million. But... So, let's say a little bit of deals, a little bit of bonuses, 100 million round total. Mm-hmm. Is that worth it for someone who can maybe help you guys get back into the Champions League? Well... I mean, they're in but back to, into challenging for the Champions League. Because I don't think Bayern Munich will challenge for the next season. You don't think so? No. Why do you say that? Because there's a lot of other teams that are better than them. Even with their spending that they Liverpool, have Liverpool, City, Juventus. Could you say PSG, potentially? I think those are four teams, at least. Barcelona, <laughs> Real Madrid, I forgot about them. <laughs> Those are okay, six teams at least better than them and then, on, on paper at least. And then there's always some team that comes out of nowhere. You know, you have your Atleticos. Mm-hmm. You have your Dortmunds, you know. I mean, there's Ajax one year, Roma Ajax, another year. Roma, Leon's not a half bad I team. Mean, Roma aren't in the Champions League. but No, they're not. Because yeah. Claudio. But, uh, I don't know. You definitely need to bring some improvement to this squad to compete, but... You also brought in a lot of young players already. You're not going to be the best team in Europe initially. But Leroy Sané is a young player. Yeah. He's like, what, 23? But Leroy Sané is a player that if Bayern signed, they can probably keep for the rest of his career because yeah. he's German. He, you would think, yeah. And Bayern's the key team for Germans. Yeah. For market, market-wise and... I don't know. If, I, if I'm Bayern Munich and if I want to go out and win a Champions League, go sign the guy. All right, well, let's move on to some Serie A or Italian f- rumors because Buffon. Yeah. Buffon the buffoon. Man, the goal you do not like that much, apparently. I like Buffon. I just, I don't know. You just, Why do we even call him Buffon the buffoon? What did he do? Because he made a mistake against Manchester United and then you said that he should have retired years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was it. The Champions League. Yeah, I forget. I, I, re- I remember now, but yeah. <laughs> so... Do you still have those thoughts about him? I mean, he's a good enough goalie. He's just not my favorite. Good enough for Leeds? Leeds United have made an offer for Buffon. Supposedly Buffon and Leeds manager Marco Bielsa are buddy old pals. I mean, two Italian guys, you never know. Is there any credibility to this rumor? I don't necessarily know. However, would you love to see it? Of course. <laughs> It'd be weird seeing Buffon in the championship. But where else, where, where could Buffon go at 43 or however old he is? Porto. Because Casillas has to yeah, stop Casillas playing. is done playing. But does, does Porto just want to have a constant rotation of old goaltenders coming through? If I'm Buffon, I'm going one of three places. One, back to Palermo. Palermo? You mean Parma? Parma. Sorry. Parma. Two... Go to the MLS, go chill over there. Or three, fuck it, go to Leeds. <laughs> what else you got going on in your life? Or just retire. I mean, this just man, retire. Why retire when you still love the game so much and you, you can, can still offer be something? be a coach. Go, go coach the Italian But that's not the same, team. Liam. It's like me telling you to, to uh, instead of drinking alcohol, just drink water. I don't drink that much alcohol, Lucas. I, I, do, I do drink lots of water, <laughs> but you know. You do enjoy a good beer, though. I mean, everyone enjoys a good beer. Well, except me. Fair enough. I don't know. Buffon, could he go to Leeds? I'm going to say no. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't see the money being there. I don't see the interest being there. I don't see Leeds, of all teams, being the destination for him. Just retire. All right. Uh, well, I guess we might as well stick with some Italian-ish rumors. And James Rodriguez and Costas Manolas, they're rumored to be joining Napoli soon. Manolas! Do you like these signings for Napoli? I mean, James Rodriguez would be a great signing because he is a very good player. And re- reuniting with Ancelotti, yeah, where he had success. one of his favorite managers. Manolas, I mean, 
I gotta be completely honest. Other than his goal against Barcelona, I do not know much about him. Oh, really? I don't. I don't watch Syria, Lucas. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Syria hater right here. I just I can't stand Syria. But Manolas, he is. I think he's a little overrated, but he's definitely one of the better defenders in Syria. And him joining up with Koulibaly as a center back partnership would probably it be definitely it would definitely compete with Juventus and Inter for best defense in the league. Like easily. I mean Napoli want to win Serie A. That's their goal. Yeah. Like that Do would... I see it happening? Of course not. That's <laughs> Juventus' job. That's what they do. But maybe however, they're making a good push. I got you gotta give them they're making a good push. If they do get the signings, Rodriguez or Manalas. They're a solid team. And I mean, yeah, with Carlo Ancelotti, they have a great manager. Yeah, it's like this past season was just Ancelotti's first season. They were yeah. transitioning away from Sari to yeah. Ancelotti's style of play. Maybe once they fully implement it, they'll be a and scary you know, team. Maybe with Sari now going to Juventus, maybe Juventus will have a bit of a, of a season where they are not playing 100%. Yeah, because going from a defensive tactic for many years to an attacking one is very difficult to adapt to. Now, obviously, Juventus have some of the best players in the world and some of the best attacking players as well. Yeah. So maybe that transition won't be as difficult like at Chelsea. Could we see this being an opportunity for teams like Napoli or Inter to maybe get one ahead of Juventus? I think the first month will tell you. If Juventus drop a game or two in the first month, the title is wide open. Because usually in Serie A, what happens is all the teams will start relatively strong and then Napoli will lose a game against an absolute dog shit team. And then they'll be out of the race. That's what happens. Hmm. So now, if Juventus can drop a game against a terrible team in the first month or two, then you know what? It's wide open. Because you know I think Serie A will come down to a handful of points this season. So you're saying... You should watch Serie A this year? God, no. Why play not? style's <laughs> atrocious. I can't stand Italian play style. Plus, I can't stand that the stadiums are half empty. I mean, that's kind of fair. Like, it's just, there's no atmosphere. Well, I mean, some stadiums have good atmosphere. <sighs> I don't like it. No. We might as well get give on me, to... Give, give me Selhurst Park anytime. Big old Crystal Palace. That's an atmosphere for you. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's also Totti who did leave Roma, which is big Shocking. because the Roman boy been at Roma for many years, 20 mm. plus seasons as a player and as a director, and now he's gone and he had some interesting things to say about the American owners. What did he say, Lucas? So he said, the main focus of certain people has been to remove Romans from AS Roma. Over the last eight years, since the Americans came in, they tried in every possible way to shove us to one side. It's what they wanted, and in the end, they succeeded. I mean, if that is the reality of it, that's rather unfortunate that they're trying to st almost stamp out the identity of the club just to make it more of a business. It's probably not the first time that's happened at some of these historic clubs that, you know, like Juvent know. Juventus has been a team that's really kind of focused more on business rather than mm -hmm. uh, loyalty and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like they've made Del Piero leave earlier than mm -hmm. he wanted. Probably the same with Buffon. Um, but he, he also said some other things to, I don't know if saying expose is the right word, but he said it's too, it's too easy to hide because the truth hurts. The coach may well have made mistakes. This is Di Francesco who mm -hmm. was fired. Mm hmm but he asked for four or five players, and they signed zero. So we're looking at a similar situation as Jose Mourinho when he was at Manchester United. Because when he was at United, he gave a list of three defenders that he wanted. Mm -hmm. He got none of them. And then he gets fired, and he goes, I wasn't given a team. I wasn't given the team that I wanted. How can you, you know, how can you fire me when I can't play with the team that you have in front of me. Mm -hmm. And like we can talk about United after this if you want cuz there was an entire Twitter storm going off about Manchester United. Okay, that'll be interesting to hear, but just to finish off with Roma like they had a semi semi-final Champions League run. Yeah. 
and they ended up selling two, their best goalkeeper, Allison Becker, and mm-hmm. some other players, I think. They just tried to cash in on them, right? And they didn't bring anyone to who was suitable enough to, to build replace. on that run. Yeah. Like, when you make a... I guess it's tough to say, because in Roma's position, they have to deal with financial fair play. And obviously, they're that, that, not the top team yeah, in Italy. Yeah. So, it's always going to cause some troubles. But not even attempting to build upon the Champions League semi-final run and bringing in players that nearly every single one of them didn't help the team except for a young kid called Zaniolo. Mm-hmm. And he was great for them, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Roma have a new coach who, I guess, Toddy doesn't like that choice either. But we'll see what happens with that club and what moves they make this summer. Now, Liam, you mentioned Manchester United in what we talked about. Manchester United were, well, they were trending worldwide as number one on Twitter with the hashtag Glazers out. Manchester United fans are sick and tired of the Glazer family, which is the owners of Manchester United. Uh, They want them gone. And their reasoning is the club's in a massive amount of debt, over a billion pound, uh, sick... Oh, wait, a billion? A billion pound of debt. What? Just because the they use, you know, like, they count sponsorship deals and whatnot into the club's worth. Now, Liam, we aren't finance majors or anything like no. that. But that doesn't sound good. That sounds absolutely atrocious. But, you know, the, the club's in lots of debt. They haven't won a title in six years. They're in no real position to go and challenge for the title. You know, the club is full of players who should not be putting on that jersey. And I think the board is clueless. I, 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 for the life of me, I'm not a United fan. Was our other host, if you're new to the podcast. He is a big Manchester United fan. And I know if he was here, he'd be losing his mind right now. <laughs> but the reality of it is, Ed Woodward should not have that job anymore. It's the truth. What has he done that's worthy of him to keep that title? Get some uh, good deals. Phil Jones? Not Liam. Sanchez? Liam, I wasn't talking about on the pitch. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand why he's still there. And that is something that the United fans are calling out for. They're going, why is this guy still here? Why are we having no shakeups of our board when our team's in dismantle mode? You know, we have no drive, no ambition, and no, you know, and there's a tweet here from a United fan. I, I don't know if anyone famous what, or not. What's his at? Um, at Manchester United Channel. Okay. But he goes, Juventus have won eight consecutive Serie A titles, and they signed Cristiano Ronaldo and now possibly Matias De Litt. Real Madrid have had one poor season, and they got Zidane in five top signings. Meanwhile, Ed Woodward is giving deals to Young, Jones, and Smalling. <laughs> It's the, it's the bloody truth. No. I'm not a United fan, and I can sit here and say, what are they doing to a, such a great club? Uh, as a Liverpool fan, I've been in a similar position with the Hanks, and I don't, yeah. I don't even remember their name anymore. They're, they're so, they were such bad owners, I don't care about them. But they, they brought the club down. I remember Liverpool were close to the relegation zone one mm-hmm. season because they brought in Roy Hodgson as manager to replace Rafa Benitez. And they sold great players. They brought in shite, pretty much. So it's just it is. I do. I don't know if I should say I feel for United because it's United, but, <laughs> and they obviously still make a lot of money and still have financial power to make signings like potentially Juan Bissaka for fifty million pounds. Which but, is absolutely absurd, by the way. I mean, just say that. Do you think he won Basaka's worth 50 million pounds? Is Mendy from Manchester City worth that much? Benjamin Mendy? Yeah. Probably not. He's injured half the time. I don't know. Players worth how much a club is willing to pay for. And if the player is successful, then you can't really complain. My only problem with Juan Basaka is his end product last season wasn't the greatest. Didn't have too many assists. But then again, not every fullback is an Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Andy, Andy, Andy. You got Kieran Tierney in that list? Does Best have, of all time? Does he have a lot of assists? I mean, he's not bad. Yeah, there's rumors Arsenal won him. They made a 15 million pound offer for him. We turned it down. 
I want 50 for him. 50? Give me 150. The boy's worth anything in the world. <laughs> but here's, here's a picture. I don't know if you want to insert it. I can send it to you. But the Manchester United club debt is around 500 million pound. But plus interest, oh. that brings it to 786 million pounds. So not 1 billion. Not 1 billion. But then plus you know your shareholder fees, director fees and everything. Once you add it all up, you're damn near a billion. Mm-hmm. So that's not good. So... We'll see what happens with that. I think the only way to really make an impact on this is to have a protest at the stadium. Well, they are. But, you know, there's a lot of tourist fans in the Premier League. Yeah. And there's also a lot of fans that just like watching, just supporting the club. Plus, let's be honest here. The Glazers are not selling Manchester United. No. If, If they're still making money off it, which they are, they're not selling this club. It's similar with Arsenal and... And Stan yeah. Kroenke. Yeah. Like, the Arsenal want that guy gone as the owner, but you probably won't see him go until Arsenal start losing money. And mm-hmm. that'd probably be if they get relegated. Yeah, 100%. It might, it might have to be that extreme. But, yeah. What else are we going to... Liam. Let's talk about... Liam. Like last week, we... Fr- we, we had a tr- big rumor last week that mm-hmm. we had to insert earlier into the podcast. Mm-hmm. What are we missing this week? Matthias De Litt. To Juventus. Yes. How did we miss that? I don't know. It was third on my list here. Jesus. Uh, we just missed out. We just went to straight to Mats Hummels. Matthias Delut. Are you tired of these rumors? He's been linked with literally half of Europe's top clubs, but it's looking very likely he will be joining Juventus, which, to me, is a good fit for him. Do you, do you think... Because the rumored fee is 70 million euros, which isn't that bad, honestly. Like, I'm surprised terrible. Ajax isn't asking for more. Yeah. But the <laughs> wages rumored, this includes bonuses, mm-hmm. but 15 million net a per year. Per season, yeah. Which is insane for a 19-year-old. But if he ends up being the next Van Dyke or the next best in the world... But you, like what if you're there's trying, no guarantees yeah what if you're trying to renegotiate contracts yeah with this kid in the future yeah is he gonna want half a million pounds a week yeah like that's it's it's insane, insane. like i mean but i think i think you've are looking at okay Chiellini, how long does he have left probably one or two couple seasons. seasons bonucci he'll be okay for a little bit he's younger but he also can be error prone which is a problem yeah he he's not exactly I don't think as professional as Chiellini is. Mm-hmm. So if you're saying, okay, Delit is our new number one center back, and we then got to find a partner for him. Well, you know what? I think Bonucci is going to be good enough beside him. There's also Rugani, but... Yeah, Rugani, but he's... So, eh. so spend your money, get Dilit, and have Bonucci beside him. And then, you know what? In five years when Bonucci's get, getting old, you know what? Then bring in a new guy. And then, you know what? Dilit can be there for 20 years still, and... 20. Not 20, not 20. <laughs> 15. It's not Maldini. He won't be playing 15. until he's 41. You never know with Juventus. <laughs> they have a team of 50-year-olds and they're still doing well in the Champions League. But I still think this guy's going to play for Barcelona one day. Yeah. It depends on money. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if Barcelona, Barcelona want to part with 15 million pounds a season, you know? Well, like, I like this kid a lot. I think he is probably, if not the best prospect in the world. One of. One. Very close up but, there, yeah. Him working with Raiola has a dirty taste in my mouth. And, like, you're 19 and you're you're working with someone to get you a wage this high already? If you don't know, Raiola is, is I, think, a, I mean, football super agent kind of thing. You know, he's all these giant names on his, on his if list. If you're wanting a move, you get that guy or Jorge Mendes as your agent. Yeah. I mean, but, they're, some say they're, like, dirty agents because, you know, they all play dirty mind games like, and whatnot. But they he's, not get, even, he's not even this guy's agent. They he's, get results, usually. He's not even this guy's agent. Hey. He's just the guy who's making the transfer happen. Hey, he's getting the money. It's insane. It's great. I love it. Like, Welcome to business, Lucas. It's cutthroat. I understand that. But like. But if you're Matthias Delit, why would you not cash in right now? I mean, that's fair enough. Your name's enough. Red Hot. That's fair enough. Get but the money while you can. What, what happens if he breaks his leg in next season? Then you know what? He never gets back to levels at which he's at. You never know. Well, med- I think medical science is improving where... I mean, yes, but you never know. Yeah. But how, what about the players on Juventus who maybe don't make as much? Maybe they're like players that should be making more, 
but they see this kid come in who is maybe five, ten years younger than yeah. him, making significantly more than anyone else. That's something that Juventus are going to have to roll the dice with. You know, they're going to say, "We're going to take the chance of our other players wanting more money or wanting to leave just to get this guy because you know we know he's going to be here for the next." long time and he's going to be good for us maybe this is why barcelona didn't want to maybe aren't yeah. buying him because maybe they aren't willing to pay i mean this basically much money. right now the list is down to juventus and psg in terms of who's going to sign him i don't think he's going to go to psg that doesn't seem like a club for him barcelona's name will always be in the hat because of their barcelona yeah. juventus is the team for dillet i think he will work really well in sorry system yes yeah. He's really good at bringing the ball forward and yeah. passing the ball from the back. And in, he will learn under Bonucci and Chiellini. Those are two very experienced, very well-rounded defenders. Mm-hmm. Mr. Chiellini, economics degree or something like hey, that? Chiellini's or master's, I don't know. So I think that but covers the transfers. Can we talk about another defender on potential on the move? Who is that? Harry Maguire. Oh, he's being linked with United for a decade now. United and City. And City. There's a lot of reports where he's going to be going to City for eighty million pound, which will make him the most expensive defender in the world. Well, at least until Delit moves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I'd be more than Delit. <laughs> that would be nuts if Harry Maguire's more than Delit. I'm sorry, but then again, that's the Premier League. <laughs> that's Premier League money for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. People were laughing about Van Dyke's price. Van Dyke proved it. If Maguire makes a move like that, do you think he can prove it? Because I like they, Harry Maguire, I really do, and I think he's exactly what Manchester United need. Does City need him? Probably, because I don't like City center backs. But <sighs> if I'm United, I'm signing. Harry Maguire. No matter what price? I'll go up to 80 million for him. Jeez. <laughs> but think about it. But, but you know you need defenders. You know, okay, Juan Bissak is a great start. Now, you say Diego Dalo. Well, you know what? Maybe he can move into midfield. I don't know if he's going to suit midfield, but that's where they're kind of, I think, they're going to try to look for him. And you need a center back, pair, center back pairing for the future because you don't have one right now. Jones, Smalling, it's not good enough. Like... <laughs> They don't have anyone who's a solid center back. I mean, Harry Maguire is someone who can be there for the next five, six, five, five to ten years. Uh, I just want to double check here because I know he played for Hull City, which... Uh, Harry Maguire? Yeah. Yeah. And Andy incredible what players Hull City had, yeah. even though they got relegated. Yeah. They, they were one step ahead, but I guess they just couldn't find the right manager. Was but, it not Steve Bruce? Maybe he was there. I know Marco Silva was there at the end, but... Mm. He just couldn't get the right things to happen at the end. But he also played for Sheffield United. Sheffield. Imagine a player from Sheffield United. Doing well. Well, they're in the Premier League. Yeah. Was talk crap about them last week. Or two weeks ago, I don't remember. Sorry, Sheffield United. (laughs) But a guy coming from Sheffield being worth 80 million pounds. Incredible scenes. So, uh, I guess some quick things to go around. We won't talk about it too much. Uh, Petr Cech returns to Chelsea as mm-hmm. new technical and performance advisor. Good move. That's fine. And Lampard could be named manager this week. That's just dumb. Uh, also, Mich- Michel Platini, once great midfielder, once UEFA president, now disgraced. Absolute fraud. He got arrested. He's yeah. currently banned from FIFA, but maybe he could serve some jail time. Yeah, basically, he's got arrested because of... Shocker. He took bribes for the Qatar World Cup. What? Apparently, Blatter didn't take bribes from Qatar. <laughs> yeah, you, you know you're bad when you're doing worse than set Blatter. Like, jeez. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Michelle Platini can go away. Uh, it's crazy, like... People, football players can be such great role models on the pitch and maybe inspire a lot of people. But Atrocious ones off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last thing to mention before we get into some competitions. Fernando Torres, he's retiring. Thoughts about this? Goodbye, El Nino. Yeah. He was one of my favorite players when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, I was very sad when he left Liverpool for Chelsea, but a lot of injuries definitely 
wrecked his career a little. I just thought of something. Uh, Rafa Benitez. Oh, yes. Rumored to be leaving Newcastle once his contract's up on June 30th. I believe it. If, if that happens... Newcastle if, are in trouble. I think if Newcastle don't make the right hire, they're relegated next season. Easy. They have okay players. Uh, I mean, they could potentially become one of the world's most expensive or wealthy clubs if they're taken over by the chic of wherever. But that's been silent for weeks. Yeah, it has been. Maybe this was just Ashley just bringing up hopes of the club like he has done many, many times, times in the past. Only to grab it and throw it in the trash. Yeah. Because he's just that kind of guy. Rafa Benitez is a very, very good manager. And I think he could be doing much more than... Newcastle. I think Benitez could be a solid Champions League, if you know, Europa League manager. Mm-hmm. There's rumors that a Chinese team is offering him twelve million a year. There's also rumors that Rafa wants to stay in England because that's where his family is. So who's looking for a coach in England? Chelsea. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> come on, come to Chelsea. <laughs> but realistically, I think he'd be take a sabbatical for a year. And... Just relax. Take a year off. We're done with Mike Ashley. <laughs> okay. Right. Women's World Cup. All right. Some really interesting matches have happened. Yes. I know one affecting your team, but we'll get into that one a little Bottle more. jobs. Four matches so far have happened in the round of 16 as of time of recording. So so the first one was uh, Nigeria-Germany, which finished 3-0 for Germany. I think that game, every, everyone thought Germany would win that game. Mm-hmm. And Germany are currently one of the favorites. Uh, we'll see how they do against potential opponents, Sweden or Canada, who play tomorrow. Or today, if you're listening, on Monday. Upload day will probably be Monday. So, yeah, they play Monday afternoon for us. But the game later in that day was... Yeah, it was Norway-Australia. Mm-hmm. And that I felt, game was, felt back, bad for the Australians. That game was fantastic. I wanted the Aussies to go through because I liked them. <laughs> Yeah, Norway scored in the first half after Australia had a chance to... Uh, I think it was their best player, Kerr. She had a chance to play in someone, but I mm-hmm. think she took a shot. And that ended up getting becoming a counterattack, leading to Norway's goal, which was a nice finish. Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. To me, the Women's World Cup has started to heat up, especially in this round now. You know, the matches are getting a bit more intense, a bit more meaningful. I don't think we've seen the best of the tournament yet, though. Not yet. You you expect more? So there's been a lot of good matches. There's been a lot of good matches. I don't know. I just sometimes I feel the there's moments where the quality dips. Oh, no. Yes, I don't know. That's just my 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 views on it so far. I I haven't been able to watch any of this round's matches yet. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, the second half of that Norway Australia game, back and forth. Australia were looking for that goal. Norway were counterattacking. They had three pretty good chances to score, and all saved by Australia's goalkeeper. Yeah. But Australia, they got a corner kick, and I don't think anyone touched the ball off the corner kick because it just went right in. And Straight in. 1-1. One, one. In the extra time, Australia's player got a red card. Some controversy with that. Some, The ref said it was last woman, mm-hmm. but some say that the player wasn't going to get to the ball or the goalie was going to get the, to the ball first. But nevertheless, it went to a shootout where the, Kerr, five goals in the World Cup. You'd expect her to score the penalty shot. You would think. If she can't take it with her head, that's the only issue. She scored <laughs> most of her goals off like crosses into the box. I mean, unless she could head a uh, penalty in. But her penalty shot was probably one of the worst ones I've seen since maybe Sergio Ramos' miss. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a great shot, and it let Australia miss another one, and they would only score one penalty shot in the whole shootout, leading to their loss as Norway would score all four, Mm -hmm. and Norway will be playing England, who had an interesting match against Cameroon. Yeah, the England versus Cameroon game was eventful, a little bit disgraceful, but overall hilarious, I find. (laughs) I mean, basically... VAR, whether you love it or hate it, whether you agree with it or disagree, it is what it is. And, you know, you can argue if the call doesn't go your way, but you have to accept it because it's physically there in front of you on a screen and that's what it is. It's scientifically proven. Well, 
scientifically proven? I mean, it's in front of you. You can see if they're offside or whether the goal goes in or whether this, whether that. It's pretty it, much just another person getting a better view. Well, of getting more chances to view it in slow motion or this or that. Anyways. England score a goal. Mm-hmm. It's called offside. This was to make it 2-0. Yes. Because the first goal happened in the first goal. First goal was the pass back that led to the indirect free kick where oh, yes. there was 11 Cameroonian players on the line. Yeah, the first goal for England, uh, Cameroon passes back to their own goalie. It's an indirect free kick within the 18-yard box. England score goes through the wall of 11. Second goal, England go through, called offside, VAR checks, not offside, good goal. Well, Cameroon got rather upset by that. You know, the video of the one girl spitting on the English girl, whether that's that was like happened a, or not. That like, was in the 12th minute. Okay. Well, whether that was like intentional or not, that was whatever. Anyways, yeah. Cameroon decides to argue with the referee and they want to stop playing. They're, they're like protesting the match. Now, do you think the referee should have handled this better? How do you handle that? Maybe give a yellow card for not taking the kickoff quick enough. Who do you give, who do you give a yellow card to? Fair enough. Like, it's not like, oh, you. It's just like, no. It, it's, yeah, you can't give 11 players yellow cards. Yeah, it, it, it's something that has to be handled, unfortunately, off the field in terms of, like, a financial or, like, a FIFA ban or something, you know? And it wasn't the first time they had that protest in that game. As yeah. They did score early in the second half, but... One of the Cameroonian, Cameroonian players' legs was offside when she was running back to get the ball. Mm-hmm. Very tight call and very unfortunate, but it offside. technically is offside. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a foot or an inch or a mile. It's offside. And maybe the offside rule needs to be considered or some changes? No, why? That's offside. What's wrong with it? Mm, I, whatever, you're right. <laughs> That's wrong with it. The girl's offside, Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I won't try to play devil's advocate here because the reaction afterwards, obviously, you can be very, really hard done by after having you having a tight call go against you mm-hmm. in the first half and go against you in the second half so quickly when you think you're back in the game. But how they reacted afterwards is just unacceptable, and you re- you just want you don't want to see people. You don't want the world to look at you like that and mm-hmm. have a negative view on it. Like, what if that's someone's first time watching the Women's World Cup? And maybe they'll enjoy seeing stuff like that. But maybe there's those that think, is this how they act? Yeah. You know, they, they, they didn't accept the decision. And they just argued. And you, know, you have to say, you know what? Move on. Sorry. And then towards the end of the game, one of the players pushed the England captain and then stamped on her ankle. Yeah. And the referee looked at it on VAR, mm-hmm. only gave a yellow. Which is stupid. And there was also an, an, a penalty case where players kind of stepped on her foot. Ref looked at it, didn't give a penalty. But mm-hmm. I say that's kind of close, but whatever. It, nevertheless, disappointing from Cameroon. Be but better. Congrats from, to England. Be better, Cameroon. Be better. So, finally. Canada. Well, no, France. Forget about France. Yeah, the host nation, full crowd, win the game in extra time. Very tight match. Mm-hmm. Must have been nervous being a French fa- fan in that game. But you get the job done, and now you have a potential match against either the USA or Spain. <coughs> Probably USA. So it's going to be... be a tough one to play against. Yeah, so the games still haven't happened yet. Includes Sweden, Canada. We're Canadian, so we hope Canada wins that match. Sorry, Sweden. Well, unless if you beat us, then piss off. <laughs> yes. Uh, Italy play China tomorrow as well. No, on Tuesday. Italy will win that one. You think so? Yeah, they've been okay. I mean, they finished top of their group. Yeah. It was a very tough group, actually. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, China's group was pretty tough, too. Yeah. Uh, Netherlands play Japan, who beat Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, Netherlands look really good, honestly. Yeah, they are a good team. They're European champions. First two games, they're a little I, I told you they would beat Canada. Oh, I mean, Liam, it's not the first time you've been right. I'm right all the time. Not true. All the time. Okay. Um, and also Spain against USA. So I'm guessing your predictions is Italy, Netherlands, USA, and... Are you going to say Canada or Sweden? Are you going to go against your 
home country? I'll go Canada. If if Sweden score a goal first, Sweden go through. Also, you want to discuss the Scotland game that had some controversy? Listen, all Scotland had to do was win their game. They were up 3-0 with 10 minutes left. They tied 3-3. <laughs> now, there is controversy at the end because Scotland had a penalty. No, Argentina had a penalty. Scotland saves it. The referee goes, no, 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 we didn't take it again. Your foot was off the line. Is- However, if you look at the picture, her foot's on the line. Like in the air, but above the it's line? It's on the line. She's diving. And her foot's on the line. Bullshit. You must have been pissed. Scot- I didn't even see the game. I saw the highlights. Scotland and international tournaments just do not go along. It's just, nah. It's the history of Scotland. It sucks to suck. <laughs> All right, so Copa America, last match day coming around. Bloody Messi does it again. Well, he wasn't involved. He didn't score the goals, but... It's he- FC Messi. Okay, you can call it Argentina if you want. It's FC Messi. He gets all the credit when they do good, and he gets all the the comfort and cuddles when they do bad. Mm-hmm. But Colombia win the group. Yeah, yeah, I called that one. Uh, in the Group A, Venezuela beat Bolivia 3-1, so they get second and will be playing Argentina in the next round. Come on, Venezuela. Uh, Brazil absolutely demolished Peru 5-0. Are you shocked by this? Well, I mean... Have you seen the Brazilian squad, Have you Lucas? seen the first two games? Brazil won. 1-0 and 0-0. That's okay. They won. That's underwhelming. Their squad's good. But the thing is, there was a lot more Brazilians at that match, so maybe that... Pump the team yes. up a little more. The Samba boys. Yeah. Um, and match day three still hasn't happened yet, but... I just, I just, I'm really happy that Neymar's not there. I don't like that he's injured, but just, I'm happy he's not there. Uh, and Group C still hasn't finished, but Chile play Uruguay for... It'd be a great game. I mean, it's for the winner for Group C. It'd be a fantastic match. My, my money is on Uruguay. Yeah, they're, they're definitely one of the favorites in this tournament. Japan, they could qualify to the next Come round. On, Japan. I think if they win, they uh, finish as a uh, one of the best third place. I'm teams. upset that Qatar is out. Why? Because I wanted them to win it all, just to <laughs> piss all the Copa America parade. They get their chance again next year. Big ups, Qatar. All right, um, and also Gold Cup, Canada demolished Cuba today. <laughs> yes, seven nothing. Yeah. Again, are we shocked? I mean, when there's. A- Three, four players deferred to the USA. They got Jonathan Davis, all they need. Mm-hmm. USA actually showed some fantastic play. USA are good. You were talking... No, Waz was talking crap about I like them. the USA. I, I think they're a very good team. Yeah, they, I have them doing decently in the World Cup coming up here. It's not for another three years. That's why I think they're going to do good. I think they're going to be a solid team. Yeah, they completely demolished uh, Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, is that really a test, Lucas? Trinidad and Tobago made them not qualify for the World Cup last They've year, learned their two lesson. years ago. What was the final score? 6 nil. Good. Uh, the Gold well, Cup is only interesting when it comes down to the last like, four teams. Oh, well, hey, Curaçao or Curaçao? Curaçao. They beat Honduras? Honduras. Because Emilio Izaguirre isn't there, that's why. <laughs> um, um, and Mexico... They only beat Martinique 3-2. That's okay. They took a day off. They had a siesta. I mean, fair enough. So Mexico win the group. Uh, Canada finished second. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the other groups still need Who to Who did pl- Canada lose to? Mexico. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Duh. You know, let me just say something about that. Can- that Canada play, like, at least in the second half. Well, What was the final score? It was 3-1 Mexico. You predicted that. One of us did. One of us predicted 3-1. I don't know if it was either me, you, or was. I don't know. Hopefully it wasn't you. I hope it was me. Uh, but yeah, Canada, I think how they played against Mexico after they switched to the 4-3-3 was probably the best I've ever seen them play in my yeah. life. Like, genuinely, it's not been that great in my lifetime. But <laughs> Canada's pretty crap. But we're coming. We're coming back. Yes. When we host the World Cup in 2026, well, kind look of, out. Kind of hosted. Look out. But uh, other groups still need to play, be played. I assume Costa Rica will go through. Well, both Costa Rica and Haiti are already qualified. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamaica and El Salvador have four points. And go Cur- on, Jamaica. And Curaçao has three. Go on, Jamaica. Uh, group D, USA, and Panama already go through. They already have six points, while the other teams have zero. And also, uh, my Poland, because I'm also Polish, uh, 
they got demolished by Spain in the under 21 euros 5 nil. Good. So we finished third on the in the group with six points. Feels bad. That's all I have to say. Who else in that group? Uh, Italy and Belgium with Spain. Did you really think you were going to make it out of that group? Who finished bottom? Belgium. Jesus. Italy got six points. Spain got six points. But you finished third in goal difference. Because mm-hmm, Spain scored five goals. <laughs> That's just suck. <laughs> Uh, I, honestly, I turned the game off after 2-0 because Spain had already 10 chances in the game. And I realized where this game was going. Yeah. Uh, the shots were like 33-4 to four or something. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Italy game Poland played, except it looked like Poland invented Catanaccio football in that game. Fair enough. Uh, today's games, Denmark beat Serbia 2-0, Austria, Germany tied. So even with Luka Jovic, Serbia's not that good. No. <laughs> One man does not make a team. You were right, Liam. I'm Lucas, so- I'm right all the time. When are you going to learn this? <sighs> nah. Is there anything else to talk about? I think that's it. I think so. Uh, yeah. Let's wrap this up. So. If you're still watching or listening, me and Lucas appreciate it. Thank you very much. The other much. two, they clearly don't. They're not even here. But <clears throat> make sure you hit sub- subscribe, like the podcast, follow along wherever you may be watching us or listening to us at. Make sure you share us with your friends. From myself, Liam, and Lucas, and uh, Waz, no. and special guest Greg. I'm not going to mention them. This has been yet another week in Beautiful Game. See you next time. What's the point of having two other hosts if they don't show up? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the Liam and Lucas podcast. Welcome back. <laughs>